This is NDDC Today. Good evening and nice to know that you could join us. The Niger Delta Development Commission in the last couple of days has been a major focus in most media space, especially with the Commission's ongoing hearing by the Senate ad hoc committee set up to look into its financial dealings dating back to the last seven months. In this week's edition of NDDC Today, we bring you blow-by-blow blow account of the events at the hearing in Abuja which took place last week. I am Uri Ngozi Chukuka. to most Niger Deltans is a child of necessity that must be guarded jealously and to keep the dreams of the Commission's finding fathers alive therefore there must be adequate checks and balances as the events of the last one week has thrown up. The Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC was set up in the year 2000 by the then administration of President Olusegun Basunjo to facilitate the rapid development of the Niger Delta, among other development objectives. This was circled to several years of agitation by the people of the Niger Delta, who felt neglected by the Nigerian nation, in spite of the crude oil resources that came from the region, which provides an estimated 90% of Nigeria's petrodollar income and the bedrock of the nation's economy. And so, the creation of the NDDC gave a breath of fresh air and rekindled the hope of the people of the Niger Delta that at last their region was going to witness the much-needed attention and a rapid transformation through the provision of basic infrastructure and the empowerment of its people. But 20 years down the line, the hopes and aspirations for a better Niger Delta region, some say, is still an illusion as there appears to be no commensurate level of development in the region. This anomaly necessitated the call for a forensic audit of the NDDC by the nine governors of the constituent states that make up the region when they visited the President, Muhammad Buhari, in 2019. They then urged the President to authorize a forensic audit to investigate the affairs of the NDDC from its inception in the year 2000 to date. Many think that this was catalyzed by the perception that funds from the NDDC were liberally employed by opponents in the last elections. On October 17, 2019, President Muhammad Buhari, in his official Twitter handle, at mbuhari announced, I have ordered a forensic audit of the Niger Delta Development Commission. And he went further to say that the amount of money the federal government has allocated the NDDC would like to see the results on the ground. Those that are responsible for that have to explain certain issues. That presidential order for a forensic investigation on the operations of the NDDC from its inception was widely applauded by stakeholders across the Niger Delta region and even beyond. Days later, after the announcement, President Muhammad Buhari went further to appoint an Interim Management Committee IMC, to run the affairs of the NDDC as well as oversee the forensic audit of the Commission. At the beginning, the IMC comprised of three members, but was later expanded to five in February this year. Then, the acting managing director, Gwene Joinunye, was replaced with incumbent Professor Kame Bradikumo Ponde. As soon as the IMC was appointed, it began to witness a barrage of criticisms and allegations of misappropriation of funds from different quarters. A major chunk of the allegations leveled against the IMC centered on financial management. 
One of such allegations was that the IMC spent over 40 billion naira within three months without recourse to established process of funds disbursement. The President of the Nigerian Senate, Ahmed Lawal, set up a seven-member ad hoc committee to specifically probe the alleged financial recklessness of the NDDC Interim Management Committee activities. The resolution to set up the committee followed deliberations on the motion sponsored by Senator George Sekibo on the floor of the Senate. Mr. President, thank you for inviting me and giving me the privilege to move the motion on the urgent need to investigate alleged financial recklessness in the Niger Delta Development Commission. With the approval by the Senate President on the motion of Senator George Sekibo on the floor of the Senate, the management of the NDDC led by its Acting Managing Director, Professor Kemobra Dikumopunde, led other members of the Management's Commission to appear before the Ad Hoc Senate Committee at a two-day public hearing to clear the air on the alleged financial dealings leveled against the IMC. The committee members assigned to the ad hoc job included the following members of the Senate. Senator Olubumi Adetumbi as chairman, Senator Jika Haliru, Senator Tanko Amakura, Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari, or Senator Chukuka Utazi, Senator Ibrahim Hadeja, Senator Degi Eremunyo Biobarakuma. Recently, the acting managing director, Professor Kamebrandu Kumoponde, and other members of the IMC appeared before the Senate Ad Hoc Committee at a two-day public hearing to clear the air on the alleged financial recklessness. Setting the agenda for the hearing, the chairman of the seven-member Ad Hoc Committee, Senator Lubumi Adetumbi, representing Ekiti North, said that the scope of the investigation of the committee covers activities of the NDDC over a period of seven months. October 29, 2019 to February 18, 2020, which represents the period when what he termed as the first IMC came into office, and from February 19 to May 31st, which represents the tenure of the second IMC, led by Professor Kemi Bradikumoponde. He said that every other activity of the NDDC prior to the IMC era is being handled by the Forensic Audit Report. In order not to have an overlap of work and review of the same thing, we have decided that everything that happened before October 29 will be handled by the forensic auditors and we are only limiting ourselves as ad hoc committee to the activities of the NDDC under IMC1 and see too. Senator Dutumbi revealed that his committee had acquired financial documents from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, the Central Bank of Nigeria and the NDDC itself, detailing the financial transactions of the NDDC from October 29, 2019 to May 31, 2020. He read out the record submitted by the NDDC, which spelled his expenditures over the period on the review. From the records of the NDDC, said you have spent 81 billion 549 million 894,866 That is what we got from you. Shortly after the presentation by Senator Adetumbi, other members of the committee who had listened with rapt attention at the figures being read out by the chairman sought further clarification from the NDDC Acting Managing Director and the Acting Executive Director Projects, Dr. Cairo Ojubo, on issues relating to the expenditure profile. First was Senator Chukuka Utazi, representing Inugu North, who sought clarifications of what the NDDC meant by emergency expenditures. The purpose for the COVID-19 payments made to staff of the NDDC 
as well as the other COVID-19 interventions to the state government in the Niger Delta and the Nigeria Police. I have access three questions here. I will want to answer uh, a response to that before I get further. At the beginning of uh, the COVID pandemic, the NDDC as an intervention agency decided to intervene and the intervention came in different forms. The first uh, intervention we did was to give cash to the different state governments, which you'll see in the records there. We gave a total of uh, 775 million to the nine states. Now, in addition to that, there was uh, 270 million. We have 27 senatorial districts in the NDDC. And because of pressure from our stakeholders, we now budgeted and sought approval of 5 million for youth groups and 5 million for women groups and those living with disabilities in each senatorial district. We have staff. NDDC has about uh, 1,000. 400 and something staff across the nine states. Each of these staff, whether you like it or not, are also like representatives of their people. We are under a lot of pressure and we decided at management level and such approval to pay COVID allowance to every staff of the NDDC which we did. And from what I was paid, I am still, still paying people out as palliative. A lot of staff also use that for treatment of their, um, some of the union members met me last week. If not for that money, they will have lost their families. 475 million was also given to the Nigerian police to buy face masks and hand sanitizer. We work closely with the security agencies. They are partners. And if they make a request to us, we respond. A request was made from the high command of the Nigerian Police Force for assistance. And the management looked at it and approved something for them. The police, the money paid to the police for coffee is for the nice case of the Niger Delta region. A former governor of Nasarawa State and senator representing Nasarawa South constituency, Alhaji Tanko Amakura, in his part, wanted explanations on the sum spent on impressed by the NDDC management. I would like to know how these impressed accounts or monies are spent. During the, uh, the, during the uh, lockdown, uh, Your Excellency, the Special persons were given special permission to move around. Level 0 to 13, if, uh, uh, even till now, till we speak, are still not coming to the office. And we supervise, we, our, our constituency is nine local, uh, nine uh, states. And then we, when we move, if the terrain is not like you are in Abuja, you go from a uh, National Assembly uh, to the presidency. No, it is with. Sorry, one of those are visits. We have it where we're in a boat. You go by boat. And when you're going by boat, these are very difficult areas. They can kidnap you inside. A lot of issues. So, the 51 million are talking about. How much is to hire a boat? You hire the boat. And then when you're, home, you're not going alone. And you get there, you see communities, they sit down, old men, everybody. And it is that from for community payment for payment that you, you, you look at them. Forget, don't forget that the reason the NDC was set up was to bring about peace and conducive atmosphere where companies can operate. Since the IMC, have you had any community anywhere where there is any dis dissatisfaction? Normally, when you go to the NDC office, it is jammed, you cannot even walk. But the, this current IMC has managed it in such a way that we ask for the route to you go back to your, local, to, your, to your areas of, uh, of origin. And then we now go to go and meet them. And that is why we have been spending the money for the for the And to, to also tell you, the money is retired as if in civil service rules. So money, not one penny.
anything has been misplaced. Senator Jika Haliru from Bochi State asked to know why the NDDC has failed to complete lots of ongoing projects, some, according to him, dating back to 2004. The issue, the question he has asked is very apt. Why? And we have said it repeatedly, that those whose uh, uh, legs are on the neck of NDDC, you, it's only this committee that can remove uh, the, the, the legs from the NDDC neck so that we can fix. If you don't remove the legs, no project can be completed. When we got to the NDDC, the headquarters building was 40% completed. The minister said, look, work night and day. Go and complete it. So we called the, the, the contractor and the subcontractor. They paid the money. The subcontractor disappeared. So we called them, but they said, no, that that's not what they do. That the money paid for subcontractor is for them and for their sponsor. Therefore, they're not coming back. We said, no, we are not going to do that. You must come back. And we started the process of prosecuting them. Then they came back. That is why you see that we can move into the headquarters building. And these are the difficulties in the NDDC that we are trying to kill. He also spoke on the allegation that the NDDC does not consult beneficiaries of projects before citing such projects in their domain. That is the issue of the, of the emergency. When they introduced this emergency uh, re regime in the NDDC, they now scattered the, the projects everywhere without consulting the communities. And that is why we are saying that the budgeting system must be changed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, make a representation for us. Match and match our budget with the Niger Delta plan. In fact, you distinguish a uh, senator. You can see that going forward, communities will be consulted before projects are cited in their domain. Responding to issues raised on the payment made by the IMC to contractors on the second day of hearing, the acting managing director of the NDDC, Professor Kame Bradikumo Ponde, revealed that the NDDC had published names of all contractors paid by the IMC and the amount paid in some national dailies. He stated that the payments were backlogs of debts inherited by his management which needed to be cleared. We published the 35.3 billion contracts that we paid in the newspapers two weeks ago. We published in two weeks. There is no contractor who has come up to say that he or she did not receive uh, um, the monies. Some of the contracts were as low as one million naira. As we speak, we had computed those being owed less than 10 million naira, zero to 10, and it has come to 1.6 billion. We have not given those contracts. We are trying to clear uh, a backlog of things. And in trying to clear that backlog, we're, we are being castigated. It's also good to note that for the first time, the executive director of project goes to verify every project. They do measurements and they pay according to the quantum of work that is done. From 14 projects alone, 1.6 billion was saved. And nobody's clapping for the IMC for introducing that. On the allegation that the IMC appointed the auditors overseeing the forensic audit of the NDDC, Professor Ponde stated that the information was false and went on to set the record straight on how the auditors were appointed. The NDDC cannot choose who audits the NDDC. It is done at the level of the presidency. The process went through BPP and a lead forensic auditor was appointed and the Federal Executive Council approved that lead forensic auditor who has started work. They also approved how much should be paid. So the idea of uh, forensic auditors, how much they are paid, it is not the duty of, if we are the ones choosing forensic auditors, I, I could choose my friend. It's not the minister that's chosen. It's the Federal Executive Council, chaired by the President of Nigeria. 
clarifying yet another allegation about the contract awarded for the COVID-19 palliatives by the NDDC, Professor Ponde revealed that the contract was carried out also with presidential approval. The COVID-19 intervention, he made some measurements about uh, the different dates. I have letters here. The first letter is the interim approval dated 5th of April 2020 by the minister asking us to go ahead pending presidential approval. I have a second letter here, 21st of April from the minister. I'm going to give you now. The second letter transmitting the approval from Mr. President. On the alleged diversion of scholarship funds meant for NDDC scholarship to graduates of the Niger Delta, to himself and other members of the IMC, the acting managing director had this to say. The scholarship was almost paid until the petition came that myself and uh, uh, Dr. Cairo had put our children in the list there. And we have some small issues as per the remitter platform when they are uploading. Instead of putting um, a trip to the UK to verify overseas scholarship, it was written payment for foreign scholarship. At my age, I'm, I have scholarship. I've reached the height of academics. I had a PhD centuries ago. So why am I doing scholarship? Please, let's be very careful with these allegations. The second day of the investigative hearing had the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Gotswil Akpabio, in attendance. In his presentation as the supervising minister that oversees the affairs of the NDDC, Senator Akpabio appealed to the Senate through the ad hoc committee to assist the Niger Delta region to attain the much needed development it requires. The minister lamented the poor state of infrastructure in most communities of the Niger Delta and urged the National Assembly to assist the NDDC to correct the anomaly through adequate budgeting and speedy passage of the Commission's budgets. Senator Obon Godswil Akpabio further stated that as the Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, he would be happy to succeed in the responsibilities given to him by President Muhammad Buhari to ensure that the Niger Delta region was developed for the betterment of the people of the region. I am not the kind of minister to come and not leave legacies behind. President Buhari wants to change the Niger Delta region, but how can he do that? As a minister, I'm determined to succeed, and Mr. President is determined to succeed, and we need you to help us to succeed. The minister also revealed that the Ministry of the Niger Delta Affairs was working with an international partner to harmonize the Ministry of the Niger Delta Master Plan for the Niger Delta and that of the Niger Delta Regional Development Master Plan of the NDDC in order to create a synergy for a common regional master plan for the region. This will be devoid of duplication of projects by the various agencies in the region. We want to have one regional master plan for the Niger Delta region so that we do not have duplication of functions, we do not have duplication of uh, projects, and we don't have a situation where there is no synergy between the state government. Most of the NDC complete, completed projects are not owned because they can come to your area and build a health centre. And the health centre must have been suggested by somebody in Abuja. They don't hand it over to the local government, they don't hand it over to the, to the state government, and it will remain there for 10 years until it, the building starts to dilapidate. There's also there's no ownership. We must create that synergy between the communities and the projects, between the state governments and local governments and the projects that we are taking down. In all, there is no doubt that the Niger Delta region and its over 31 million people crave for a vibrant NDDC that will champion the cause of the much needed development of the region. As the forensic audit of the commission is ongoing, it is the desire of the people of this oil-rich region that the development of the region is also carried along with it. Whether they are doing investigation forensically or anything, it should go side by side with their location. 
meant for NDDC and development should be going on. That is what the NDDC was set up for. Welcome back. President Muhammadu Buhari has spoken on the crisis bedeviling the NDDC. The president, in a statement through his senior special assistant on media and publicity, Madam Garabashehu, has issued directives to security agencies and forensic audit firms working with the NDDC to conclude their job in an acceptable time frame. President Buhari said the administration wants to bring about rapid, even, and sustainable development to the region, even as he assures that his administration would put in place a transparent and accountable governance framework, not only in the NDDC, but in all other institutions of government. The statement added. In a similar development, the South South Governors Forum has backed the forensic audit of the NDDC through a statement issued by the chairman of the South South Governors Forum and governor of Delta State, Senator Dr. Ifani Okoma. The statement reads, The South South Governors Forum has backed the forensic audit of the NDDC, ordered by President Muhammad Buhari, expressing optimism that the audit will help put the Commission on a sound corporate governance footing and reposition it to better deliver on its mandate. The governors, in a statement by the Forum Chairman and Governor of Delta State, Dr. Infanyo Koa, said, We believe this Senate is operating within its oversight functions through the ad hoc committee set up for that purpose. It behooves us to respect the Senate oversight function and allow it to discharge this responsibility in a fair, transparent and equitable manner. The South South Governors are desirous to see an NDDC that is fully alive and responsive to its mandate of accelerating infrastructural development of the Niger Delta region and enhancing the general living conditions of our people. Hence, we will not hesitate to give our unqualified support to any policy initiative that will make this a reality. Finally, we wish to reiterate our stand that both the Forensic Audit and the Senate investigation should continue and be concluded with dispatch so that the NDDC can quickly return to its role of advancing and protecting the development aspirations of our people. At the end of all of this, one thing needs no begging, and that's the fact that the NDDC must fulfill its mandate, come rain, come shine. Now, any process that will position it better to achieving this purpose is a step in the right direction. We will be here next week to beg this prayer. Thanks so much for watching and good night.